Now, I guess it's partly because I continue to communicate my thoughts to some degree, even talking to mainstream media people, although increasingly less and perhaps not at all from here on in. I mean, I, I had an interview with the London Times two weeks ago, three weeks ago, it was published. And, you know, it was just another complete, absolute bloody nightmare for my family, my daughter in particular, because they took her to task in an extraordinarily nasty way. And, uh, you know, and the journalist who did the interview was completely, she, you couldn't invent her. You know, not only the way she, she, she was so deceitful in what she did, but I, I learned more about her background afterward as a consequence of another journalist who wrote about her. And, you know, she's um, a very singular person, to say the least. And so I did feel at the time, like you did, I guess, that I was more afraid of not speaking than I was afraid of speaking. And I have something against being told what to say. It's like, I'll pay the price for what I have to say. I'm not going to pay the price to say what you want me to say. You go say it yourself and see what the hell happens. And, you know, maybe that's just a kind of incomprehensible stubbornness in some sense. Um, although I did, I think I did see what has, I did see the beginnings of what has unfolded since then. Although I can't even really put my finger on what it is that's happening. So, well, I, I wonder a little bit about, um, you know, in some ways, you know, there's nothing good about why you were absent from the scene. Uh, but there may be something good about your having not been there for every moment of it and being able to come back to the discussion with something like fresh eyes, because a, a lot of this is developmental. 